Today we're going to talk about kinetic energy. What is kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. If it moves, it's demonstrating kinetic energy. In fact, even this has kinetic energy. Kinetic energy can be found anywhere in nature, from man-made objects like rocket ships to natural objects such as a bumblebee. All of these and anything that moves has kinetic energy. So how do we know how much kinetic energy something has? In other words, can kinetic energy be measured? Well, the answer to that is yes. Kinetic energy can be measured. And just as we label the metric measurement for length with meters, and the metric measurement for mass with grams, and volume with liters, the standard metric measurement for kinetic energy is the joule or joules. Let's take a look at two items with kinetic energy to figure out where those joules are coming from. So here we have a car at the top of our screen with a velocity of 55 meters per second, and it's demonstrating quite a few joules of kinetic energy. And beneath it we have a scooter also moving with a velocity of 55 meters per second, but as you can see, the joules of kinetic energy for this motor scooter are much less. Why? Well that's because the mass of each of these items is different. The mass of the car is 750 kilograms. Where the whereas the mass of the scooter is only 500 kilograms. If something has more mass, then it has more kinetic energy. This is the first factor we need to know when calculating kinetic energy. In our second example here, we have two cars with the exact same mass, 750 kilograms, and yet their kinetic energy is substantially different. Why? Well, in this case, the velocity of the car on the bottom is 75 meters per second but the velocity of the car on the top is 55 meters per second. And this shows us that both mass and velocity contribute to kinetic energy. More velocity means more kinetic energy. So in order to know how much kinetic energy something has, there's a formula. Once we know the mass and the velocity, we can take half the mass and multiply it times the velocity squared, which is the same as speed, and we get kinetic energy. The formula can be reduced down to look like this. Ke equals one half m times v squared. Let's look at an example. Justin is rolling a three kilogram bowling ball down the lane at a velocity of two meters per second. How much kinetic energy does the bowling ball have? The first step in solving this problem, after we write down the formula, is to substitute in the numbers. We have three kilograms. That's the mass of the bowling ball. So we're going to substitute that number in for the m. We have a velocity of four meters per second. So we're going to put that four in for the velocity. The next step is to solve the exponent. The exponent is this number right here. So it has four squared, which means we're going to multiply that number times itself. Four times four is 16. One common mistake students make when multiplying exponents is they try to multiply times two. Don't fall into that trap. It's four times four, which is 16. The next step, we have to multiply. So we're gonna multiply three times 16, and that's gonna give us 48. In step number four, we're going to take that 48, and it says one half of 48. Another way to do this is to simply divide by two. So 48 divided by two is 24. Now that we have our solution, like any good scientist, we need to label our answer. So our kinetic energy is 24 joules. That means when the bowling ball is rolling down the lane, it has 24 joules of energy. So now you know, if we have the mass of an item and the velocity that it's traveling, we can find kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is the energy of motion.